Welcome back. In the previous videos, we've laid all of the groundwork, so now it's time for us to build our first virtual machine. We're going to be starting with OpenSense. I decided to use OpenSense as our router as I wanted to create a separate network for our project. I didn't want to use IP addresses on my main network as certain IP address that I would like to use may already be assigned to another device within my network. So OpenSense is perfect for the situation as we can use it for our router firewall and we can also create other networks that we could use for other situations. Now, before we start, let's create some tasks for ourselves to ensure that we're on the right track. And here's what I would like us to accomplish. First, we want to create a new virtual machine in VirtualBox. We will assign two network adapters to our virtual machine. Ensure the first adapter is assigned to VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter number two. Ensure the second adapter is assigned to the bridge network. Assign a static IP address for the LAN network, which will be 172.20.20.254, and that will be on a slash 24 network. We'll leave the one adapter to obtain an IP address through DHCP. And lastly, we'll enable the DHCP service on the LAN network with the IP range 172.20.20.10 to 172.20.20.100. Before we dive in and start to create our first virtual machine, let's refresh our minds with how our network is currently set up. I'll open up my draw.io diagram. And if you've closed this, you can reopen it by going back to the draw.io website click Open Existing Diagram, then find your Windows Infrastructure Diagram file and open it. We can see our OpenSense router has two network connections. We have a WAN connection and a LAN connection. For the WAN connection, the IP address will be obtained through DHCP, and our network adapter for our WAN connection will be EM1, and our LAN connection has the IP address of 172, dot 20 dot 20 dot 254 and that's on a slash 24 network and our network adapter will be em0 going by the numbers of the network adapters we'll need to ensure that our first network adapter is our LAN connection which is em0 and our WAN connection will have the adapter em1 OpenSense will always assign your first network adapter to be your LAN connection so keep that in mind Next, back inside of VirtualBox, we'll go back to network. And remember, we created a new network adapter called VirtualBox Host Only Ethernet Adapter Number 2. And it has the IP address 172.20.20.1. We need to ensure that our LAN connection for OpenSense will be on this network. We'll click on the three lines and return to the Welcome section. Then we'll click New to create a new virtual machine. We'll name our virtual machine OpenSense-VM. My virtual machine will be stored in D, VBox-Storage. I'll click on the drop-down next to ISO image, then click Other. Navigate to the Downloads folder, then select the OpenSense ISO file and open it. I'll change the type to be BSD, since OpenSense is based on the free BSD operating system. Then notice the subtype and version gets automatically filled in. For unattended install, all of the options are currently grayed out because this feature is mostly used with Windows-based operating systems to help automate certain tasks. For hardware, I'll give our VM two gigabytes of RAM or 2048 megabytes. I'll bump up the processor count to be two. For hard drive space, I'll increase this to be 20 gigabytes, and notice I have the option here to pre-allocate full size, which will block off 20 gigabytes on your hard drive that will be used by OpenSense. I'll leave this unchecked as I don't want to commit the space. I'll click Finish to complete my virtual machine creation. And before I start my virtual machine, I will need to modify the network adapters. So I'll click on Settings. then network. For adapter one, I'll change the attach to to be host only adapter, and I'll change the name to be VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter number two. Just a reminder, this was the adapter we created earlier. Then I'll click on adapter two. 
I'll enable it and I will attach it to the bridge network. The bridge network will allow our OpenSense virtual machine to access the internet. It will place the adapter on the same network as your host PC or the PC that VirtualBox is currently installed on. I'll click OK to complete this task. Then I'll click Start to power on my new virtual machine. I'll wait a few minutes for the media to boot. The boot process is completed and now we can proceed with the installation. First, I'll click on this little blue exclamation mark here to get rid of this sidebar. Then I'll click on view, virtual screen one, and I'll increase the size of the screen. Notice when I click inside of the virtual machine window, I'll get this pop-up box that's basically telling me that when I click inside of a virtual machine window, the virtual machine will take control of my mouse and keyboard. And if I want my host computer to regain control, I'll have to press right control on Windows. If you're using Mac or Linux, this can be different. I'll click capture and now you can see that my mouse and keyboard is being used by OpenSense. I'm currently moving the mouse, but you cannot see the cursor. I'll press right control and we can see I've regained control of my mouse. I'll click in again and I'll check the box for do not show me this message again and proceed. Now that we're booted inside of OpenSense, notice we get this message. Welcome, OpenSense is running in live mode from installed media. Please log in as root to continue in live mode or as installer to start the installation. Use the default or previously imported root password for both accounts. Remote login via SSH is also enabled. Notice that it tells us to use the default root password, but it doesn't really tell us what it is. To find this information, we'll head back to our web browser. I'll open a new tab and go to google.com. then search for OpenSense default password. And we can see Google is telling us that the default password is OpenSense. So we will use that. Back inside of my virtual machine window, we'll enter the username installer. I'll press enter. Then I'll enter the password OpenSense. If you're typing and you don't see any characters being displayed, don't worry, this is a feature of Unix and Linux based operating systems. For security purposes, it doesn't show you the password you're entering, nor does it show you any symbols to help you out. You just have to ensure you're typing the correct password. If you get the password incorrect error, just try again. I'm sure it's just a typo. Once we're done, with entering our username and password, the first screen we get to is key map selection. I'll just continue with the default key map. Next, I'm asked if I want to install with ZFS or UFS. I can also enter other modes to perform an extended installation. I can import the config, reset my password, or force a reboot. I'll select install with ZFS to continue. Next, I'm given some options for redundancy. I can select mirror to have two drives mirror each other or another red option for even more redundancy. However, I only have one hard drive on this virtual machine, so I will select Stripe, which does not create any redundancy. Now, because this is a test environment, I'm okay with accepting this risk. Next, we have to select the disk to install OpenSense on. You can select the disk by pressing the spacebar key on your keyboard to fill the bracket with the asterisk symbol. Once you're done with that, you can click OK. Last, it will just warn you that it will destroy the contents of the disk when installed on OpenSense. I'll say yes to confirm. And once you hit confirm, you can see that installation begins. I'll fast forward until it's done.
Once the install is completed, we get two options to either change our password or complete the install. I will select to complete the install, but I will change the root password in the future using the graphical user interface or the GUI. Notice before the reboot begins, we get this message saying that we can open a web browser and navigate to https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.1 to access the web console and that the browser may report the HTTPS certificate as untrusted and ask you to accept it. Just make a mental note or actual note of this for the future, but we'll continue with our reboot. The reboot is completed. But notice we still get this message about the instance being run in live mode. Basically, OpenSense is still being booted from our DVD ISO instead of the hard drive. We can resolve this in a few ways. We can either change the boot order in the BIOS or we can eject the DVD ISO. But what I will do is just remove the DVD drive entirely as I have no more use for it currently. To do this, we'll shut down our OpenSense instance. To administer OpenSense, we'll log in as root with the password OpenSense. And once we're in, we have these actions like logout, assign interfaces, ping host, etc. And to perform an action, we'll simply use the number at the beginning of the action. So I want to power off my system. We can type number 5. I get another message confirming that I do indeed want to halt or power off. Do you want to proceed? Yes or no. Notice that the Y is lowercase and the N is capitalized. If I were to press the enter key without typing in Y or N, it will just default to no. So I will do that. I will type in enter without pressing Y or N and we can see that it just defaults to no. I'm back at the main screen. I'll do this one more time and this time I will type the letter Y and then press enter and we can see that OpenSense is now shutting down. Once OpenSense is completely turned off, I'll click on settings, then I'll go to storage and I'll just remove the OpenSense disk drive and then I'll click OK and I'll start my OpenSense virtual machine once again. Once it's back online, you can see we no longer have that message about OpenSense running in live mode, which means that it's now booting directly from our hard drive. Just a quick glance at this screen, you can see that we have our LAN connection assigned to EM0 with the IP address 192.168.1.1 and this is the default IP network that OpenSense assigns to your LAN connection and our WAN connection is assigned to EM1 with the IP address 10.10.10.60/24. This IP was assigned automatically to my WAN connection through my DHCP server on my home network. Moving on, we can now assign our preferred IP address to our LAN connection. I'll log in using root as the username and the password will be OpenSense. The option we want is number 2 to set interface IP address. I will type number 2 and then press enter. Next, I'm asked to enter the number that corresponds with the interface that I want to configure. We want to configure the LAN interface, so we'll enter number one and proceed. I will say no or press enter to proceed without obtaining an IP address through DHCP. For the new LAN IPv4 address, we'll enter 172.20.20.254 and once again, just a reminder, this IP address corresponds with what we did inside of our network diagram. Our subnet mask is a slash 24, which is 255.255.255.0. Slash 24 is called cider notation, and 255.255.255 is called dotted decimal notation. They both represent the same value, just in different forms. We'll enter 24 and proceed. Next, we're asked about a LAN IPv4 gateway address. Since this is for our LAN network, we can just proceed. I'll say yes to configure IPv6 LAN interface via WAN tracking. I'll say yes to enable a DHCP server on the LAN network. 
the start of the range will be 172.20.20.10 and the end range will be 172.20.20.100. So our OpenSense router will hand out IP addresses between the range 172.20.20.10 to 172.20.20.100. Before we proceed, I just want to clarify. Earlier we were asked if we want to obtain an IP address through DHCP, and now we're asked another question about DHCP. Just to clear this up in case you're confused, the first question asks us if we would like to obtain an IP address through DHCP, which means our OpenSense router will reach out to the network and grab an IP address from a DHCP server to use. What we just did was enable the DHCP service on OpenSense so that other devices on the network can reach out to OpenSense to get an IP address. In short, in the first option, OpenSense will take an IP address from a DHCP server and in the second option, OpenSense is the DHCP server that will give out an IP address. You probably already know this, but maybe there was one person that was confused, so I just wanted to clear that up. Next, we're asked some questions about HTTPS and certificates, so I'll just say no to these. It's just three questions, I'll just press enter three times. And with that, we're done. Our OpenSense router is configured and it's ready to hand out IP addresses. In the next video, we'll be building our first Windows server. So I will see you in that video. Thank you. If you find the information helpful, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Thank you.